In our alpha programs, one of the final sessions The question is asked, does God still heal today? And throughout the session, we've discovered that yes, indeed, God does. But healing doesn't always have to look supernatural or spectacular the way the healing in our gospels today looks. The fact that God has created our bodies in such ways that it, it can heal itself if given proper nourishment and rest our bodies fight off infections quite amazingly. But there's also the way that God has created people to be creative in their own understanding of the human body and in the way that they treat it. The development of medicines, of vaccines, as we've seen that can be done in, in less than two years. Um, that these are ways that God still does heal us though perhaps not spectacularly. But healing is not just about our physical bodies. God is interested in all of who we are, our emotions, our relationships, our spiritual state. And in fact, the words translated as heal in the Bible can also be translated as save. So when we speak about Jesus as our savior, Yes, he has saved us from our sins, but he also saves us from a bunch of different kinds of infirmities, emotional, relational, spiritual, and physical. Many of the recorded instances of Jesus healing people also include him forgiving their sins, bringing those two things very much together. But that's not well, the case in today's gospel, we have two healings in our story today, and neither of them does Jesus also talk about sins, which makes me think that there he's highlighting something else. Our story begins with a plea of a father for the life of his 12-year-old girl. For 12 years, this little girl has filled her home with joy and laughter, but now her home is filled with mourning and sorrow as she lies in her bed so weak that she is dying. And Jesus brings her back to life, but asks that it became, be remaining a secret. People might know that he had healed her, but raising her completely from death, he kept that quiet. What Jesus does is he's reunited a family. He invites the mother and the father into the room along with his three closest disciples as he performs this miracle of resurrection. He brings her back to life and the house can be restored to a home filled with joy and laughter. A family is reunited. And yet in the middle of this beautiful story is another story, a different story about Jesus' encounter with a woman who for much of my adult life has certainly been a bit of a heroine for me. She has suffered for 12 long years. 12 long years, our translation today said with hemorrhages, other translations say of issue with blood. However we translate it, her affliction is the same, and it is an affliction that would make her ceremonially unclean. The fact that she's out in a crowd where people are bumping into her is very dangerous because everyone she touches is made unclean. And being unclean means she cannot go to worship. She cannot actually remain in her home. She cannot share her husband's bed if she has a husband. She cannot sit on the same chair as anyone else. She is isolated. 
Her affliction keeps her separated from anyone who would care for her, anyone who would dare touch her. Scripture says that she has spent all that she had on, uh, on doctors, which means she's either a widow or has simply been abandoned by her family and no one else will care for her or pay even her medical bills. She is alone. She's someone who would have to understand our rules of social distancing and isolation. She would not have had the luxury of being able to attend worship via Zoom as we do. She just wouldn't be able to go. And for us, these 15, 16 months have been very long and very difficult. For her, this has stretched on for 12 long years. And without her encounter with Jesus would have continued most likely the rest of her life, possibly shortening her life. And so she's taken a great risk to be out in the streets. If anyone recognized her, they would probably have shunned her and created a large vacuum around her because she was unclean. And yet this is a woman of great faith. She knows her scripture. She knows her promises of the coming Messiah. She knows of Malachi 4 verse 2, which says the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And to her, this is a promise that she sees fulfilled in Jesus. And that's why she thinks to herself, if only I can touch, our translation said his clothes. Others say the hem of his garment. But I believe she's talking about something slightly different. I live close to Bathurst Street. And certainly on Friday evenings and on Saturdays, if I am out and about, I see people dressed in a particular way who are also out and about walking. Their dress gives them away as being Jews with their hats. Many of them are very orthodox. They, even, they have the tendrils. And peeking out from under their dark coats, you'll see white tassels the white tassels on the corners of their prayer shawls, which they have underneath their coats. And so all you can see are these little tassels. And the tassels are often referred to as wings. And so with that picture in mind, imagining Jesus, of course, a, a devout Jew, walking through the streets, he would have had his prayer shawl over his shoulders. And the tassels would have dangled down near the ground. These wings that this woman has interpreted to contain healing as she understands the prophet Malachi, she reaches out to touch them. She does, and she is aware that she is now no longer hemorrhaging. She's silent. And when Jesus says, who touched me? She tries to hide but then realizing she can hide it no longer, she confesses, it was myself, I touched you. And we've often wondered, why does Jesus call her out? Why does he not let this happen? And I believe it's because the healing that he wants to offer her is healing from her isolation, as much as it is a healing from her affliction that has kept her isolated. Jesus knows the physical pain of this woman, but he also is very aware of the emotional toll that these 12 years have had on her, of being abandoned, of being isolated, of being cut off. And he wants her to not be cut off anymore. And so he brings this to the crowd's attention so that the crowd can welcome her back into community so that the community can welcome her back in and embrace her, not just metaphorically, 
but can physically embrace her without fear anymore. They will not be unclean for embracing her. They will not be unclean by being near her. They will not be cut off because she is among them. Jesus knows that isolation is not the state that we were made for. He knows that we were made for community. And so restoring this woman to community is an encouragement, I think, to all of us that our community is so important and that our isolation that we've been experiencing is coming to an end. I was reading the new guidelines that fully vaccinated people can hug fully vaccinated people. And I'm very excited about that. I'm now fully vaccinated and available for hugs. <laughs> it's a real blessing and it's an act of healing that God is bringing to us. An act of healing of our loneliness, our isolation and our being cut off. I love the hymn that we sang just before our gospel. And I just want to conclude with the final verse of that hymn. So some have come who need your help and some have come to make amends. As hands which shaped and saved the world are present in the touch of friends. Lord, let your spirit meet us here to mend the body, mind and soul, to disentangle peace from pain and make your broken people whole. Lord Jesus, come and make your broken people whole. Amen.